speaking of someone who passed away, and in a few minutes trying to highlight what was unique about them, what was special about them, it's a difficult task, because a person lives a full life, and we have a few minutes to, to describe that person. And it's especially difficult when, it's, when, you, when one is speaking of a person of stature. And everyone here knows that my uncle Schmelke, the final Rachel, was a man of stature. If you didn't know him, it was it's hard to describe him, but everyone here, everyone knew him. So it's easier. I think if I were to describe him and to try to understand him, one has to understand his background and his father because the defining person in his life was definitely his father. I would ask him, once I asked him, how, what, what did he know about Zaidi? When I say Zaidi, I mean our grandfather, Mashiach. So I said, well, Zaidi was very in awe of his own mother. Beirut. And so I asked my uncle Shmelka, I said, what do you know about Zaidi's mother, that Zaidi was so in awe of her? He says, Ziyad Gehada Betazakin, what do I need to more, know more of her? She raised my father. I don't need to know anything. That, that's, for me, the ultimate compliment I can give a person. So Zaidi, my Shiyasev, came from a Rebisher background. He was raised in the home of a Rebbe and a Rebbetson. He was a grandson of Rebbe's and Rabbanim. Rebbe's for a few hundred years, Rabbanim for, for a thousand years. And I'm not exaggerating when I say a thousand years. But unlike most of his relatives, he carved a, a different path for himself. All of his uncles were Rebbe's, his cousins were Rebbe's. They, 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 that was what they did. That was what happened. But Zaidi. Interestingly, and not in line with his background, very much believed in the Derech of Shamshun of Paul Hirsch, of Tyre and Derech Eretz. I don't know where he got it from. It wasn't from his father. Um, it wasn't from any of his family members. But it could be partly because when he grew up in, in Bukovina, which was then Austria, it was a very modern time. He grew up in the beginning of the 20th century, maybe. That influenced him? I don't know. But he studied philosophy, he had a university degree, but he maintained his his civic garb, his nusach, his minhagen. He didn't take away from anything that he that he had. And he became a rough. So he really did follow the footsteps of his parents, but he changed it. And he definitely raised his sons on that model. And his son, both his sons, but we're talking about Shmelka's Karnel Vracha, he was a very perfect result of that model. You know, he was, in one hand, he was an old world man. He was raised in a town in Eastern Europe. He was soaked in Yiddish culture and in the whole background was very old world. On the other hand, he was very new world. He was a cosmopolitan man. He was well educated. He was a respected physician. He was well traveled, well dressed. He was an interesting mix of a person. But and though he appeared different, as as it was mentioned at the his fadim at the Levaya, he his neshama was totally untouched by anything that he saw or did. It was terem derachert, but it was it was bechol derachecha da'ehu. It was everything. Everything that he did, he t I, you know, I said to him, he said, what is the Messiah that my father gave me? And he said, this was a couple of years ago. He says, Tyra, 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 and more Tyra. That's how he said it. And he said, that's it. And I said, what type? Like I said, you know, anything specific that he would like to learn? He says, the Marashi Tesos. That's it. And that's how he lived. That's what he, he breathed. I know he never spoke to me about medicine. He never spoke. He, he, was, he was a man of the world. He liked to hear things that were going on, but his essence, his neshama, he would sit sometimes and just get into this dveikos and sing 
a nigging that his father would sing Friday night, and it was a, it was a, it was a sight to behold, because you don't have many people like that, and I appreciated it. For me, I did not know my grandparents, so it was like a piece of their, of them, and it was a very special thing. And I want to also say to my cousins, he was so proud of his children. He was brimming with nachas from his children. He would, in a nice way, tell me, not show off, but but pride himself and share it with me how proud he was of each of his children and his Einakach and his great-grandchildren were young but his grandchildren and his children gave him immense joy and you should feel very besides for the Kibbutz which they obviously hadn't taken care of him which is amazing and beautiful until he was older also it was an amazing thing and not everybody is eichel to that in that in that measure and they followed in his path and the way that he obviously um, raised them, which is that same derech, because they're um, professionals as he was, but they, that's just because they're professionals, because they're practical, and that's what they, you know, that's what one needs to do. Um, I'll end. It's late. I still have to drive to Boston tonight with my wife. It's the Ba'av, Lai Hayu Yamim Taibim Li Yisrael the Jewish people didn't, it was a very special day in Jewish history. It's Kaima Sira so the moon is full. If you look outside, it's probably not cloudy. The moon is full. The, the Jews are like the moon. It's a full and a happy time, and we should gather for simchas and happy occasions. Amen.